The S&P 500 shortly hit the 5,000 mark yesterday. The U.S. dollar struggles to extend gains above its 100-day moving average. So today's CPI revisions in the U.S. could help traders decide on where they want to go next as the hawkish comments from the Fed members and the strong, strong U.S. economic data confirm that the Fed does have perhaps gone too far before time. So let's see what the data says. Welcome. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. So the strong demand for the U.S. 30-year bond auction that followed two other strong 3- and 10-year auctions in the U.S. this week triggered a little appetite across the U.S. bond space yesterday. And that was most probably because these 30-year papers are long, long maturity papers and they're mostly purchased by insurance and pension funds. But overall, this week has been very successful for the U.S. Treasury Department, which actually did see a solid, solid demand for its debt throughout this week for different maturities. And that's thanks to the expectation that the interest rates will fall in the U.S. sometime this year and that the U.S. Treasury will also slow down the pace of its uh, auctions moving forward this year. So appetite in risk assets remains quite robust. The S&P 500 index shortly traded at the 5,000 psychological mark at yesterday's trading session before closing a few points below this important level. Now, this rally is not only fueled by the Fed's rate cut expectations and AI speculation, but it is also backed, at least to some extent, by encouraging technology earnings from the stars of the sleek. Because note that Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, and Meta, these five companies generated nearly 140 billion US dollar cash from their operations last quarter, and that was the highest on record. And as per the semiconductors, well, they're actually help boosting the rally as well, as you know, all well, the sales are expected to rebound in the second half of this year, according to a UBS note. They expect a 50% profit growth and margins above 30% in 2020. So it's not only your pajama traders who are buying or are bullish on the technology stocks. Everyone agrees that a part of that tech rally is, well, more fundant than just a bubble. But we also know that you can never call a bubble a bubble until it bursts. So we keep watching. What's certain at this point is that that 5,000 mark for the S&P 500 will well, get investors to think twice before well, pushing this rally above this level. Just because it's psychologically harder to say, you know what, okay, I buy at 5,000 when you have actually at least some doubts that the rally may be overstretched and that despite the good, good results and uh, favorable rate expectations for the year. And while well, speaking of rate expectations, all eyes are on the U.S. CPI revisions this Friday, which is, by the way, not on the economic calendar, so don't try to find it there. And here, note that I'm not talking about next week's monthly and regular CPI release. I'm really talking about the CPI revisions that the U.S. Bureau of Statistics will release today. So it's basically the revised month over month CPI figures for the past five years and just incorporate some adjustments to the data that we saw. So what's important to know here is that the non-seasonally adjusted data remains unchanged at today's revision. So that means that the year-over-year -year figures for the entire year's inflation numbers will remain the same. So you might be asking, why do people care, right? Well, normally they don't really care because these changes are very, very small normally and they don't really change the end result for the year and inflation numbers. But last year, the market scared because they were scared because last year's revisions were more significant than usual because obviously there has been a lot, a lot of volatility in the inflation figures with the inflation wave that hit the world. And the letter resulted in lower adjusted month-on-month 
inflation numbers for the first half of the year and higher revisions for the second half of 2022. And that was a big, big piece of information, mind you, for what was coming, as it meant that the moderation in inflation in the US was not as good as people thought it was in the second half of 2022. And the letter information boosted the interest rate high expectations in the US and also fueled the US two-year yield, which jumped around 60 basis points in the weeks following these CPI revisions. So this time around, investors will again try to read through these revisions if if there is anything that we have been missing uh, regarding the speed that inflation is moving in the US. So uh, the data will maybe tell us if the downtrending US inflation numbers height a more significant slowdown or maybe they hide a late pickup in the number. So we'll have the answer before this week's closing bell. And if the CPR revisions hint at a slowing momentum in the monthly inflation figures in the US, then the Fed does should well, come back in charge of the market and the US dollar will probably get a hit. And if the monthly revisions warn that inflation may not be slowing as fast as we think it does, well then the Fed does will further retreat and the US dollar should gain some more momentum. And if there are no major revisions to the CPI numbers, well, all eyes will be turning to next Tuesday's regular CPI update in the US. And so goes life. Now, in the FX markets, the US dollar actually struggles to gain further momentum above the 100-day moving average level. Even though the hawkish comments from many, many Fed members and the strong, strong economic data that supports that hawkish language have been on the news all throughout this week and all throughout the previous week and even though even though we saw a full blast reversal for the march rate cut expectations in the us well the us dollar gains remain quite limited at around that 100 day moving average level but but the us economy's clear positive divergence from the rest of the developed nations. It's healthy, healthy jobs market and it's decent, decent fiscal spending are obviously supporting the idea that the US Federal Reserve is maybe, but just maybe not the best candidate to begin this private dance this year. The European Central Bank, for example, would be in a much better position to start cutting its interest rates to uh, prop up its depressed economy. So that idea keeps the euro dollar offered near its own 100-day moving average, which stands near the 107.80 level. And trend and momentum indicators remain comfortably negative and supportive of a deeper downside move in the euro dollar from the actual levels. Now on the data deck today, the German inflation data is expected to confirm a slowdown below the 3% mark in January. And if that's the case, well, that should help the euro bears stay in charge of the market. Elsewhere, all well, the Japanese yen bulls are feeling the heat of a totally, totally unexpected return to nearly 150 level at the start of this year for the dollar yen. Yet the dollar yen is now trading above the 149 level, and the BOJ hawks are well giving in to the expectation that the Japs won't move soon or won't move quick enough to make 2024 the year of the Japanese yen. The dollar yen's positive trend becomes increasingly vulnerable on the other hand to verbal interventions as we approach the 150 level so I don't think that there is much to see in the dollar yen at the current levels. In the energy space we see a second positive attempt above the $76 per barrel level despite a 5.5 million barrel build in the US inventories last week. The rising geopolitical tensions, strong US growth and Chinese stimulus so all the same story remain supportive for another attempt in the US grid above the 200 day moving average that says near the 77 and a half dollar per barrel level and a last word for china for this week the chinese are off to their lunar uh, new year holiday today having closed the short trading week on a positive note and that despite revealing the last 
14 years strongest deflation numbers in China. The Hong Kong will be trading half day today. Now hope that the Chinese officials are ready to put whatever stimulus is needed on the table well, is behind this week's optimism in the Chinese stock market. Stocks in Hong Kong, however, could benefit less from these Chinese stimulus measures, and that keeps appetite a little bit less for the Hang Seng stocks. But anyway, we hope that the year of dragon in China will bring luck to Xi Jinping and his sputtering economy. So, Gong Xi Fa Tsai, my Chinese friends. So this is all for this week. I'm Ipek Oskar Deshkaya, and thanks for joining me, and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful, and it has been insightful to you. So please, do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions, and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X, and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos if you like them to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again next week. And until then, good day trading and have a lovely weekend.